Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I'm back with the much anticipated Terrain series. So uh, we're going to do a few of these. We're going to dive into uh, basically all the terrain that we use, well most of the terrain that we use uh, by manufacturer and uh, we're going to tonight start with Hardware Studios. There's been a lot of excitement about that terrain on the tabletop. So we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you some of the uh, most excellent pieces uh, from that line. Also talk about how I painted them, how I prepped them, what I needed to do. Um, so guys, stick around. It's all coming right up. All right, guys, here we are. I've got some pieces from Hardware Studios here. Uh, and he has an absolutely massive collection of things. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking that out at uh, hardwarestudio.co. Uh, I'm just going to put the link. The link's permanently in all the descriptions of our videos. You can also uh, see it pop up there on the screen. Um, so, so go over there, check it out. I mean, the stuff is phenomenal. And, you know, some of these sites you'll see 3D renders on the site, and then you get the piece that looks nothing like it. Not the case here. This stuff is absolutely phenomenal. This is just a, a sampling of some of the things that are uh, available um, I put in a fairly large first order, absolutely going to be getting a second order. Um, I also have some pipes and some other little details that are really, really cool, but I wanted to showcase the big buildings. We've had these on a couple of our more recent battle reports. So let's start with this guy here. So I'll tell you what I did here. I, this, is, uh, this is supposed to be a very sinister building, so I did a gloss black. Um, I thought that would be cool, and it was really easy to do. Just um, light spray paint, um, you know, multiple coats type of thing. I did some detail work, tried to make the doors look sort of like a glass blue, um, did some rust effects uh, up on the top, and again, for terrain, you know, that comes out pretty good. You're not eyeballing it too close. There's some drips on the side from these vents. Um, what I did to all the buildings, which I love, are these, uh, these are three millimeter diodes, and I just uh, bent uh, and twisted the uh, the leads off and glued them on, you know, sanded the bottoms if they were uneven and then glued them on and it gives it just enough, uh, catches the light in that way, kind of looks like they're, you know, they're lit up like you would find. Um, but really love this building. You know, the other thing I want to call out is the windows. So let's, let me show you the underside of this building. Now look, there's no strings, there's no junk. I mean, this is a high quality 3D print, guys. Um, and what I have here, I want to put this down for a second. Let me, let me see if I can. Um, so what, what you'll see is, is there is actually like a plexiglass uh, in there, and you can get that on Amazon. It's very thin. Um, and basically what I plan on doing here is I'm going to spray paint it. So it's just been so freaking cold, um, and I don't like spray painting indoors. So um, I'm going to spray paint them, and some of them I'm going to give them a metallic effect, like this one I think I'm going to do in a gold. So all of the windows actually, you know, you can kind of see it catching the light. They all have that awesome... Um, plexiglass in there and what's really cool guys there's slots you see the little slots so Dale who is the mastermind here he put little slots in every single building so you can just measure cut and put them right in it is really really cool and that you know when I got these I said this to uh, to Dale I said these are phenomenal that you can tell these were made by a gamer uh, a hobbyist right um, because they've got just all those little features like that so this advanced tower also really cool um, this is another fantastic feature. Uh, I think you'll be able to see this on camera. Um, hopefully it picks it up, but there's little antennas, right? And these, again, another, another Amazon special. I believe they're like three millimeter, uh, not three millimeter, um, like 0.3 millimeter. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to go and look at the exact size, but they're extremely tiny, um, in terms of the, uh, the diameter of the, of the rod. And you can just cut those with like metal snips to size, you know, these intentionally cut to kind of two different sizes there. And I didn't even glue them in, guys. I just fun tacked them in place because you know Tom, he just bumps them all the time. So you can bump them and move them and they're not gonna bend or break. Um, so I just put a little like fun tack, which is you know poster board, putty or whatever, and just put them right in that hole there. Um, love this, love the little landing up here, very cool effect. Also, this was a two piece building. Uh, I'm not sure if you can tell there is, there is a little seam there. And uh, what's cool is, you know, the, the glass on this building is one, you know, one solid piece It lined up perfectly. So you don't have to split the glass. It's just, I put the top on. I didn't even glue it together um, because there are actually, 
and I'll show you this on some of the other buildings, little feet for magnets, little holes where you can just drop a little magnet in there. Uh, fantastic. And of course, it's got the big screen over here. Um, Kevin and I have some of those billboards, so that's a great spot to put stuff like that. You could print on poster board and cut out uh, little signs of, you know, Defiance Industries or whatever you want there. Very cool. Uh, this one, awesome building. Love this building. So not only is the model just phenomenal, and you can see this one's got a bluish tint on it. Um, the plexiglass comes with like a blue film, and I actually just left it on uh, a couple of these. And, uh, you know, speaking of, of sort of prep and cleanup, very little involved. Um, you know, Dale had told me like, oh, you know, you might want to sand, you might need, you know, you might want some putty. And, but I mean, I think that's just a perfectionist talking. For a guy like me uh, that wants to get these things on the table, I did basically no prep like zero. Well, the only thing I did, and you can see in a couple places in the windows, right, there was a little bit of like leftover filament, um, which is expected because it's such a fine detail, but not a ton. You know, you just got in there with like a little model knife and cleaned them out. Uh, these buildings are, I mean, they're tough, you know, they're thick, you know, they're, they're not junk. Um, and you can see now it's much clearer with the blue. You can see the, um, the little slots and how I just slid the windows right in. And I cut this plexiglass stuff with scissors. Uh, fantastic stuff. So I'll try to let me aim it at the lights so you can see. I mean, no filament up there, real solid, um, designed structurally well on the inside. Um, really cool. So I, I put the LEDs on the top. It's got the antennas. But what I love about this building, what Tom always says, is the textured spray paint. So this was a recommendation um, by Dale. And basically what I did was I did an undercoat of, I do a bit, you know, I did everything in a base coat, every single one of these models in a Rust-Oleum gray 2x primer it's what i use basically for every single model i love it it adheres to everything um it's really solid so i started with that um and then i bought these um these rustoleum paints uh they're you know you use them for like you know camoing boats and you know if you want to camo your pickup truck if you're if you're into that sort of thing like that's the spray paint you would use like a flat and they come in you know forest green a light green a khaki uh, and a brown and so i did the khaki and then uh, I bought this multi-texture paint from rust -Oleum. And there's a few different kinds. There's the American Accents, and guys, I really don't recommend that. It's very flaky, and if you overdo it, it looks like garbage. Uh, and I made that mistake, and I can show you on one of the buildings uh, where I made that mistake but was able to salvage it, and I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and then there's the multi-texture stuff, which is a different, it's a different can. It's called multi-texture. Um, and I used like a sandstone or something, and you can see it just has that, uh, hopefully the, the GoPro picks it up, but it has that, you know, different, that speckled look to it. And it was super easy to do. Uh, and then all I was left to do is the details, right? Um, the vents here, I did the pipes down here, you know, the doors here, very simple. Um, I did do a wash on this as well. So you can see like there's some junk running down the sides of the building. Um, very, very light watered down wash, um, just to kind of highlight some of the areas because on the lighter building, I found that, um, you know, some of the detail was lost. So I did a very fine wash. Um, and that's basically all I did with that, you know, very, very easy. These guys are cool. This is the Advanced Tower D. Um, I have three of these. I think they're fantastic. They're cheap. Um, they're little, they're great, you know, to fill out a city block. They got just enough detail on them. And honestly, guys, I didn't do a whole lot of anything. Um, and the roof is a separate piece, which is awesome because you can get in there and do what you need to do. Um, you know, it's got the, um, the slot at the bottom there. It's all, and again, you know, one piece except for the roof. So it's, and all of these things, minus this one, which was two piece. I mean, they just come out. I mean, they're ready to go. Um, but yeah, these are, these are fantastic. And what I did here was, um, I did a textured, a textured spray paint. It was, uh, not very textured, but just textured enough. Gave it a little bit of a metallic sheen. Um, and then, you know, I brown, I did some brown washing on it. Um, and you can see like, uh, you know, I don't know if it shows up or not, but there were a couple areas where I sort of overdid the textured spray paint. So you got to be real light with it because it'll go on quick. Um, but what I did was I, you know, I just sort of turned it into an imperfection in the building, um, you know, a natural sort of stone look and, and did some washes and things. So even if you mess up, it's like, whatever, it's a building. You know, like find me a perfect building in the 31st century that is war-torn uh, with cities, you know, where giant robots are running around. Deal with it, you know? <laughs> so anyway... They're the advanced towers, very cool. And actually, uh, fun story. So you'll see uh, this one, you know, it has 
um, as part of the model, it has the lights, and that was actually the inspiration for putting the LEDs, um, or yeah, yeah, the little diodes rather, on the other buildings. All right, so I'm gonna go over to this series here. Very cool uh, buildings. These are two piece, the roof comes off. Um, you can see here, this is the, well, maybe you can't see, yeah, there you go, it's catching the light, but there is uh, just the plexiglass type stuff, very thin, uh, and I just, you know, boom, you slide it in. Check this out, little holes for magnets, if you wanna do that, matching holes on the, um, on the roof and a slot so you could all, you know, fit together real nice. I didn't magnetize it, I didn't need to, but if you want to, you certainly can. Um, and the detail, detail's so good. So this I did in a, in a brown, I did it in a, that brown camo, and then I did the uh, multi-textured paint, and you can kind of see the speckled look. Um, did the doors in like a dark gray, I did a little, added a little color, you know, sort of the, the tanks and the blue pipes, and you know, it's got the vent work, right? Really well done. Um, all of this stuff, just so cool. Uh, it really adds a ton of detail, and like it's a nice big surface for your mechs to, to jump on and do battle. So back to this building, I stepped away for a second here actually to grab a mech. I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a sense of scale. So going back to, to building A, you can see, I mean, that's a nice size there. Building B, I think this is B. Um, apologies to Dale, but you can see the mechs are just about three stories tall, which I think is, is right on point. Um, you know, a mech just about over that two-story, two-and-a-half, three-story mark, um, which is really cool. You know, you figure 10 meters, about 30 feet, right? You figure it's about 10 feet per floor. You know, maybe in a city building it might be more, it might be less, but this is this is right on point. Um, and these buildings, you know, obviously the, the floors here, there's, you know, there isn't windows necessarily every, every floor, but um, I think really cool. Could be tall ceilings in there. Looks like an older building. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the buildings provide excellent cover. Uh, so this one, very cool. This one's a little taller uh, than, the, than the brown one, right? There's one that's wider, one that's sort of a little bit taller. Same deal though, roof comes off, very cool. Um, I put LEDs on the top here. This is like a hell, I imagine this being like a helipad up here. Um, so I did the blue lights, which I thought was pretty slick. So creative. <laughs> but the other thing I got here that I wanna share with you is this. So this big old building is actually two separate buildings. And these two are the same building. <laughs> they just have a different roof. Um, and I do, have, I do have a second one of these in gray if I wanted to split them up. Uh, I just didn't pull it out. Uh, and what you can do is, you notice it has magnet holes here. So you, you can put it there, it has magnet holes on the other side too, and you might be wondering, oh my goodness, well, well check it out. You can put another building on top of it and make like a megalith skyscraper, very cool. Um, or if you so desire, you know, you can put it down uh, and have two separate buildings. This one also has alternate roofs. So you've got the more traditional uh, roof here. It's got the three like condensers or whatever for the air, con you know, the compressors for the air conditioner or whatever they are. Um, you know, the, the fire escape stairs or whatever it might be. Um, or you can put this on, which I love, uh, this, this particular top, because it's got, you know, if you can see, I know it's so hard to see these tiny little uh, radio antennas, maybe if I put my hand behind it. Um, so it's got these two little antenna slots up here, very cool, and I put the four lights on there. Um, so really, really slick. Uh, absolutely love this, and if you wanted you could, uh, you, it has magnet holes on the bottom. I mean, Dale literally thought of everything, which is fantastic. Um, so what did I wanna tell you? I wanna tell you about this one here. So this one, I, I used the, the heavy duty flake. Uh, and you can't tell now because I dry brushed the whole thing in a darker gray to hide, but it had these white flakes in it, and, and you can see some of them, um, but they were really, they were really, really big uh, and sort of obtrusive, and it looked ridiculous uh, when I first painted it, but um, it came out okay. Um, and I love, again, love the, the speckled look. It gives it that natural stone appear, appearance, and it's very easy. But if you use the, you know, the right textured spray paint, you won't have to go back and dry brush the building. You, know, you can just spray it and you're done, um, which is very cool. This one I washed in brown. That one I washed in black. This one I didn't wash at all. Um, one, one interesting fact about the washes, and I don't know if this is intentional or not, 
But some of these buildings, they have these like little slots in them and maybe they're for decoration, but I will tell you, I found it so awesome to just put a paintbrush full of wash and just kind of press it in there. Uh, and the wash would just run right down the building, you know, and you could just kind of do your thing and it would catch um, everything. So it was really cool uh, to kind of have those little uh, little slots there to use uh, when I was washing it so I didn't have to just kind of paint it on the building or whatever. But anyway, these are the these are the building series. Again, multiple multiple roofs, very modular, but also sturdy and easy to put together and you can magnetize them if you so desire. All right, so over here, what do we have? Well, we've got large hanger, medium hanger. Um, I did a metallic on the door here. I did some rust work. I put two yellow uh, diodes on the top. You know, I'd imagine when the mech is coming out, you know, the lights are flashing. Uh, pretty cool. Um, it isn't hollow, right? So if you were thinking about putting your mech in there, you can't do that, but that's okay. Uh, because then I would lose my mechs. It's got some great detail on the side. I uh, love the pipes. The little doorways are phenomenal. Um, it has this little, this other little entryway on the side, which is cool, which the H, you know, it's got the HVAC ducting on it. Um, and then on the top, it has these, these wires. And I painted them different cover, colors just for a little visual appeal. Um, but overall, this was real simple to paint. Um, I spray painted it. I washed it. Um, and I washed it in a really goofy color. I washed it in a color called wrought iron, which gave it this, I never, um, I'd never done anything this big in that color, but it gave it sort of that chalky uh, appearance, which makes it stand out a little bit from the other buildings, makes it look a little more military, I guess. Um, so I got a couple of those, and then these are great. Uh, these are these are warehouses. I mean, it's a big, big door. That's because there's demolisher tanks in there, obviously. Um, you know, some doors on the side, very simple to paint. You know, and this I just spray painted gray. I did a little uh, tan color on the side there, brown wash, red door. Again, very easy to do. You know, some I did some like uh, dirt and stuff on the top there, rust, just to give it a little bit of a look from the, you know, from the top down. But yeah, really great stuff to just kind of, you know, line up in your city or to have in your industrial district. Um, so really cool. And then this thing, this thing's phenomenal. I absolutely love this piece. Um, so basically, this is just cotton, you know, like wool or whatever, and I just stick it in there, um, like so. Let me bring this thing a little bit closer. So what did I do here? Well, this thing has an absolute ton of detail, um, and so what I did was I started by spray painting the whole thing in that gray color, and um, and then what I did was I painted just this section in, in like a lighter blue, white type color. I did a yellow, which I'm awful with, uh, yellow is very hard to paint with, but I actually found it really easy to do here. And you can see it looks like garbage, but you know what? A reactor would look like garbage. It's not going to look like a new car. So I was like, hey, this works out pretty well. Um, and then, you know, I did a basically uh, almost like a, it's almost not, not a sponge, but I used a really old garbage brush and put some brown paint on it and just sort of like s stabbed at this thing to give like those rust splash looks. Um, and then I went over it with a, you know, like a custom wash of like this color cinnamon. And I mixed a little orange in there. And you can see there's some bright orange and things like that to kind of bring it out. It tends to look good on camera. Now up here, um, I added some antennas. Um, and I added two blue, uh, these two, uh, what do they call them? I want to say LEDs, diodes, that's the word. Um, you know, and I just put them on there. I think there was something on here that I cut off. I don't remember what. Um but I, I cut one of them off. Uh, I, I like to mod my things. And I believe there was a power cable down here with like a, with like a box um, with some fans. And I cut that off too. Um, you know, it's because, you know, I like doing my own thing. Uh, we're, we're, we're all artists in our own way, or at least I like to pretend I am. Um, so anyway, guys, this is just, just a look at some of the fantastic stuff here, uh, like this DFA coffee mug, by the way, which you can get over at Teespring. Uh, but not at Hardware Studios. But if you want buildings, guys, Hardware Studios is the place to go. Not only is the quality incredible, but the thoughtfulness uh, that Dale has put into these designs, the magnets, right? The ability to just to, to slide the glass in. I mean, all of these things, just phenomenal, uh, phenomenal attention to detail. You will not be disappointed. Uh, I am not being paid to say this. This is a gamer's opinion. These things are awesome. And the last thing I will say is they look like Battletech. Uh, 100% these things are uh, from the future. You know, I mean, you put the Marauder next to this building, 
And I mean, it fits right in. So guys, highly recommend a Hardware Studios, even if you can only get a couple of the buildings. I mean, it will bring your tabletop to life. So that said, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this terrain deep dive. Um, if you have any questions, please post them up in the comments. Of course, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, you can always click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, and if you are a subscriber and you want more, guys, come on over to Patreon. Uh, we have three tiers, $1, $5, $10. Uh, it's all you need, $1 to buy in. You get sneak peeks, all sorts of things, access to polls. Tell us what you're interested in, help to steer the channel. And at the highest tier, you get access to a whole bunch of other perks, including our veteran challenges where you can win painted lances and other exciting things. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll have some hardware studios terrain up uh, as a prize. But guys, listen, thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great night and stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming.